Hey amigos, how's it going? Welcome to another video, and I thank you guys for giving it a click. As I said in my last video, that video was going to be the last exclusive video about this motorcycle right here. But I found out something about this motorcycle, a little more, that I figured I'd have to share with you guys. But before I go any further, I've been tracking my YouTube channel within the last 36 hours. My subscribers list has gone from the 400 mark to the 2604 mark. I'm very, very surprised at this and very, very, very appreciative and very thankful that all of my videos have not gone in vain. It's not about me. It's actually about those who enjoy watching this stuff. You know, just like Charlie Daniels said one time, you don't go to a concert and play for the empty seats. You play for the people that came to see you. And I've always been appreciative of all who have followed along and, and appreciate your likes and your comments. You know, those of you who have shared my stuff, thank you so much. But in 36 hours, I've gotten how many? 2,200 more subscribers. It took me a year to get 400, and in three days, I got 2,200 more. Um, I don't know who you guys think I am, but thank you. I'm kind of flattered. I was going to give a thank you video for the first 1,000 subscribers, but I couldn't even get this video out fast enough to say thank you to the first 1,000. So thank you for the all of you guys for subscribing from the first 400 up to the previous 2,200. And um, the comments, I appreciate the comments. But now it's gotten to where I can't keep up with the comments. I used to be able to keep up with the comments and respond or, or give a, you know, a little heart icon to everybody, let them know I'm watching and I appreciate them. But if I don't respond or if I don't react to your comments, it's because I just haven't seen them yet. Uh, there's so many more I haven't seen yet. So I guess this is going to be the new norm. But again, thank you guys so much. So on about this thing. As you guys saw before about how I traded a perfectly good 2012 Heritage Softail, a 103 twin cam for this 1994 80-inch Evo motor. Well, 1994 80-inch Evo Heritage Softail. And I did that for all the reasons that I've explained in the several videos. And I'm not going to go into that. If you guys are new to this channel and this is the first video you've seen, go back and check out the other videos. You'll find out. Anyway, those of you who have been following about this bike, know that I've been trying to make it more like for me you know and I've been doing some demodifying on it it had this hot carburetor on there this Makuni flat, uh, flat slide carburetor and it has an SNS a high 4 end ignition system which I've gotten to learn a lot about that so I thought well I can't do anything about the ignition system you know no ECM the SNS high 4 end ignition system replaces that so I've gotten to know that a little bit and I thought, well, I'll take this carburetor off because I was getting 30 miles to the gallon, as I said in one of my videos, and decided to put on one of these carburetors, one of these CV carburetors, you know, to get more fuel mileage. And I did just that. After all the effort and getting this thing dialed in, I've got seven more miles to the gallon, which kind of baffled me because I should have gotten about 40 miles to the gallon or better. But one thing I did notice that I never mentioned and that I never recorded or never got on camera is that I was having issues with this thing running hot and I was hearing engine noise I could hear the cam moving, I could hear the lifters moving, I could hear when before I didn't have any of that happening when I had this carburetor on there and with the oil cooler on there well I've since put the oil cooler on there and I also dumped out the 2050 weight that I put in there and realized I was supposed to run 60 some of you may disagree with the weight but it seems to like 60 weight better especially when you live in South Mississippi where it gets hot so anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I did that and that improved it a bit. It still wasn't as quiet as it was when I first brought this bike home. Oh yeah, also I forgot to say it, it idled in such a way at the red light. Like it had quite a lope to it. It sounded like a pit bull ready to jump onto a cat. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder if somebody has been in this motor. So I contacted the man who I got this motorcycle from and I asked him what did he know about the bike. He didn't have it very long. You know, he just, he got it and decided to, you know, flip it. And he said he knew that, that the guy he got it from put a bunch of money into it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Putting one of these in and putting in that S&S, that's a little under a thousand bucks. 
and that's not dumping a bunch of money into a motorcycle. So I got to wondering, does this thing have a cam? So I pulled up the pushrod tubes to take a look at the pushrods, and lo, what did I find? Yeah, that's right. I found some adjustable pushrods, which told me somebody's been in there. The only reason somebody would do that, one of the only reasons, is that they had been down inside that nose cone. So that explains the lope it had. And if they did that, they had to have done something to the top end to make up for it. After doing my homework and finding out what a stock 80 inch motor should put out at its compression test, it should be putting out pretty close to 125 PSI because this thing has an eight and a half to one uh, compression ratio. Mix that with the, with the formula according to sea level, the air density at sea level, you should get about 125 PSI. But this thing was pushing 150 PSI. That explains why the SNS High 4 end ignition system, why it was set to racing curves, why the advance was turned all the way down, why it had that Makuni carburetor on it. Because this right here, apparently, for what it is, it's a muscle bike. Which is why it burned the wheel taking off when I first tried it out in the parking lot before I brought this thing home. Got the 80 inch motor with a Makuni carb on it. And I was really, really surprised when I rode it around the parking lot. The thing has a whole lot more spunk than I expected. So, needless to say, with all my efforts, they've been in vain to try to make this thing as stock as possible. The reason why I was getting engine noise, the reason why I was running hot, is because I was running the thing lean and not knowing it. But now I know what the deal is. This motor is meant to get up and go, which is why it had this carburetor on it. The guy didn't put this carburetor on there to make it go fast. He put this carburetor on there because that motor required what this carburetor could deliver. This carburetor here can never deliver to this motor what it wants in, in the condition that it's in right now. So, cool, I guess. I got a muscle bike and uh, I guess I'll ride the thing until it hand grenades on me or something like that and then I'll fix it. After, after all, it is an Evo and they're very straightforward. So, needless to say, this carburetor is going to go back on that bike. I can sacrifice seven lean more miles to the gallon just to keep this motor going healthy. Anyway, that's enough about this motorcycle right now. I haven't said much about the Tramp, which this is the motorcycle that made this channel. Without any further ado, let's see what this carburetor can do on the Tramp before I put it back on this soft tail. Let's check it out. conversation about this already. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, is that a carburetor you're working on? Uh, no, it's a, it's, uh, I'm just doing, uh, uh, just doing what I was, uh, you, I mean, you'll see what I'm talking about. I already know what you're talking about. What am I talking about? Honey, I don't think it's a good idea. Oh yeah? Yeah, well, okay, I'll, I'll put it back the way it was. After? After what? After no, no, I put I put the carb I put it right back. I, I won't it. put the carburetor back on the right one. Honest. The Makuni? Huh? No, that's a Makuni. The CV. Okay. Honey, I'll, I'll, honey, never mind. Never mind. I'm going away now. I'll be back. I have okay. An, I have an errand. I promise I'll put it back. Don't call me if you end up on the side of the road somewhere. Okay. I love you. Yeah, I love you too. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> T minus fifteen seconds, guidance is internal. Twelve, eleven, ten, nine, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three.
Well, I must say, that was a little bit more fun than I expected. A little bit more get up and go than what I had anticipated. But now my curiosity is satisfied. And maybe yours is too. The tramp was on freaking steroids. That was like the Incredible Hulk of all 883s. Anyway, I thank you guys for watching. And uh, if you like what you've seen so far, go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And um, like I've been saying, I have no idea what I'm going to film next, but I will try to keep it interesting. And you guys be good to yourselves and keep the rubber side down. And again, thank you for you 2,500 and then some that have subscribed in the last 36 hours. Thanks a lot.